Around 1,200 years ago, Native Americans, known today as the Hasine Caddo, established a village here on the banks of the Natchez River in East Texas. The location provided access to extensive trade routes and to lands rich with fertile soil, abundant game, fish, and water. This village developed into a major ceremonial center and flourished for the next 500 years. At its height, an elite class of spiritual and political leaders governed a population of 600 to 900 farmers, hunters, and craftspeople. During this time, corn became a major crop. The bow and arrow, which allowed for more efficient hunting, replaced the spear, and pottery was created to serve everyday purposes and artistic expression. As the village grew, three mounds were constructed that marked important ceremonial areas. The burial mound, where community leaders were interred, grew over time. As each generation of religious and political leaders died and were buried, the mound grew in height. The two other mounds were temple or ceremonial platforms used for religious activities and community gatherings. They were also built up slowly over time. All three of the mounds were considerably larger at the end of the Caddo occupation of the site than they are today. There may have been more than 150 houses in the village and extended family groups may have lived in each of them. The location of Caddo Mounds made it a hub for trade with other groups. The Caddo traded bow dark wood used to make bows, pottery vessels, salt, and corn for exquisite stone objects, shells, copper, and ceremonial objects from as far away as Illinois. It is not known why, after five centuries, the Caddo political system waned and the site was abandoned. The Caddo lived on in the area, but they were widely dispersed into smaller villages. The mounds remained on the open prairie as a witness to the elaborate social structure of an earlier time. When the Spanish arrived in the area, they used existing Caddo trade routes as their roads through the region. One such route became known as El Camino Real de los Tejas, or the Royal Road of the Tejas Indians, which is what the Spanish called the Caddo Indians of the region. Today, visitors to the site can still walk the remnants of the Camino Real that run within view of the mounds. Much of what is known about the early Caddo has been learned from the archaeological research carried out at the site. The first excavation at the site was conducted by the Federal Works Progress Administration between 1939 and 1941. The High Temple Mound was excavated, uncovering ceramic and stone ceremonial artifacts, and the site was recorded as a George C. Davis site, named after the landowner at the time. Thirty years later, archaeologist Deanne Story from the University of Texas at Austin led the most significant exploration of the site from 1968 through 1970. Thousands of artifacts were carefully excavated and analyzed by Dr. Story. The site was acquired by the state in 1974 for preservation and ongoing research and opened to the public in 1982. More recently, new information has been obtained about the village without digging by using a machine called a magnetometer, which employs sensors to measure the strength and direction of a magnetic anomaly beneath the ground surface. The magnetometer is used to detect subtle changes in the Earth's magnetic field that are a result of human occupation. When we pull it across a site, we're able to use it to map the various activities that have taken place on an archaeological site. The magnetometer has been instrumental in locating hearths, houses, and other cultural features at the site. This data, combined with aerial photography, has allowed archaeologists to generate a clearer idea about the size and density of this once thriving settlement. Over time, Europeans settled and colonized this area 
and ultimately expelled the native people of Texas from their homelands. In 1859, after being displaced for decades, less than 1,000 remaining Caddo were permanently resettled in the region known as Indian Territory, which is now Oklahoma. My name is Phil Cross. I'm Caddo Indian. I've made bows all my life. Despite the disruption of their culture and an absence of written historical records, elements of their culture have survived into the present. Caddo Indians have a heritage of bow makers. I just feel like I'm linked from very distant lands and culture to my current culture as I'm sitting here carving it, and there's no better feeling. Today, the Caddo Nation in Binger, Oklahoma, works to preserve traditional Caddo practices. Although rare, Caddo language is still spoken by a few elders and is also being taught to the younger generation. Hello, my name is Shoni. We are Caddo. Kumbakia Hatsine! Kumbakia Natititi. Nawi. Hello, my name is Naya. Welcome. Sisimba Kiha. Sisimba Kiha. Traditional dances are still performed and enjoyed by the entire community. Caddo potters have recently revived a pottery tradition that was lost for over a century. I'm Jerry Ridcorn, I'm Caddo Indian, and my Caddo name is River Woman. About 20 years ago, I saw a demonstration uh, making Caddo pottery, so I started making little pots and, and researching and getting better and better. I would think, wow, it would be great if there was a whole village of Caddo women here and we were sitting around talking and gossiping and making pottery. The mounds that remain here today are an enduring reminder of an earlier thriving and complex native culture. They provide an opportunity to tell the story of people who lived, worked and worshipped in this area centuries ago as part of the rich history of Texas.